everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be reviewing the ec2 cw which is a zowie mouse from benq what's interesting about this now keep in mind this is an extra upload for the week so don't worry we're going to be posting a regular apex legends content but i realized on the channel that we had not been posting anything about any zowie mice and i get asked several times in the comment sections because i tend to also discuss a lot of logitech products as well as I've done ASUS. But one thing that was missing on the channel is Zowie. And this is a video dedicated to all those people asking. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a the best mouse reviewer. You're just getting the perspective of somebody who games a lot, who spends a lot of time using a lot of different mice. And we're gonna talk about them today. And we're gonna break this one down specifically, the pros and cons of it, what I think, as well as a mouse click test, audio test, and what this thing can do. So let's kind of start breaking it down. Let's get into it. So what we're gonna discuss next is I wanna discuss what was exactly inside of the box. I haven't really ever owned a Zowie mouse. The reason why I had it in the past was because they're relatively large. This one is a medium size. And because you guys know I like Logitech products, I'm gonna compare the size of a medium. As you can tell, I've definitely put a lot of time into my mice. I definitely give them a lot of love. You can tell that they're as much as I wipe them down, this glossy feel, I mean, it comes back so fast and you can tell just from the coating is very similar to Logitech. You know, you just touch a little bit and it gets dirty very quickly. I have a microfiber cloth near me, so I tend to clean it all very often, but I would almost compare this to pretty much any other mouse outside of the Asus one, which has a different texture. You can tell it's a little bit dirty, so apologize for that. Again, I try to always clean them beforehand, but at least you can tell I put a lot of love and care into these mice. This one I pulled out because I haven't used it in a while, but nonetheless, it's still a really, really solid mouse. It's very light. Now let's talk about what more, furthermore, what came in the box. This came with the little, you know, pamphlet here. You can always get these online. It's nice to see a pamphlet every once in a while, but you don't necessarily, I guess, need them. It tells you all the stuff on this on the mouse. Now, another disclaimer: I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of software for mice. Um, luckily, this is pretty much comes out of the box pretty clean, and it comes with the base of 400, 800, 1,600, as well as let's see here. I think it's a 3,200. Yep, yeah. and it goes up to 1,000 pulling rate. So you can do that all on the mice mouse here, whenever you power it on. Right now, I don't have it plugged in. There you go. You can see the different colors from DPI. Right now I have it set to 1,600. And of course you can change the polling rate just by clicking on the little buttons right there. So right out of the box, it's already set up. Pretty much ready to rock and ready to, ready to go. Now let's talk about what else is in the box. It came with this advanced dongle, I guess you could say. This was one that where it enhances the receiver. It's a larger receiver, I guess, if you're further away and that's your bag. I always recommend you, we'll see, I'm gonna show you on screen. Then we can pull this cable over here. Well, I can't. Well, right here, I have the dongle pretty close by and I use this to kind of prop it up. I have that there. And the reason I do that is because, let me plug this back in. And you'll hear the little button because I just plugged it back in. I tried to pull it out, but wires a little bit too close. And the reason I do that is because I want to have the wires receiver as close as possible. So I guess if you're in an esports arena or if you're working maybe in an office space and your dongle isn't necessarily as close, they have a regular one. I don't know if it has a specific name. I know they call them receivers, dongles, whatever you want to call them in the comment section down below. They have them here and they have the regular one where you can plug in or you have this advanced receiver at the bottom of the mouse, which I found interesting, is it has a switch. You can switch between them. So a little interesting fact there. Came with some additional mice feet. Now these, I don't know if they're necessarily pure PTFE mice feet compared to let's say, you know, Logitech's or even uh, Asus. You know, usually somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but pure Teflon is supposed to be white. And I think the black ones are dyed. I don't even know if that's true anymore. I'm gonna be honest after, I mean, I bought a lot of aftermarket mice feet and I've replaced a lot of them. Here, I'll show you another one, Logitech, where I replaced uh, the standard Logitech mice feet that were really, really bad. Logitech over the years has gotten better about that, which is interesting to see the Zowie one. Now, I will admit the glide isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Kind of right off rip, and don't worry, I'll just, uh, I, I kind of want to hold things, and so right now I'm not adjusting it right on screen. So it blurs, apologize for that. But looking at it, it's not that bad. The glide, especially on a sky pad, feels pretty good. It's not too bad. Let's see what else it came with. Let's see here. Thank you for purchasing. You know, it's nice of them to say. 
it really is it's pretty straightforward i mean everything inside the box i mean every all the wires were inside here and then boom the box is done now we go back to the mouse and you can kind of see the comparison between the two for a medium it's not that bad the larger mouse zowie one thing i used to be concerned about was zowie was always very, very large and now they're really not that bad it's nice that they came with some replacement mice feet because you do i don't think you're going to go through them you see how i've kind of already beaten them up a little bit it's not that bad i mean you could definitely uh, probably played it with the mouse for 15 hours maybe give or take you know the glide feels pretty good so let's jump cut let me adjust the uh the camera here for a second now in this portion what we're going to do let's talk about the dimensions of this mouse and so we've already given a pretty decent comparison to other mice you know and how it feels and how it looks i'll use a g303 here just as a little reference point just so you kind of give perspective especially because it's a lot thicker now this is a medium one this is the ec2 c so it kind of got that medium at least it also labels it right there the cw so then you see you know i know it's kind of hard to see so my apologies there you go now from across the top end is 61 millimeters 61 around here and then the back end is 65. grip wise the way it humps over or has this arch it feels more like a palm fingertip is not bad to hold as well grip style wise it feels comfortable and claw probably i guess depends on your hand size I guess not bad it, it depends if you want a higher profile or a lower profile this tends to have a little bit of a of a higher one just to give a little comparison there then this mouse isn't bad at all i i did enjoy it. it's heavier that's one important thing to really highlight is that it is a heavier mouse at exactly 73 grams not the biggest difference you know if you if you have them but you do feel it but you are getting at least a decent and this is without the cable by the way around 73 grams approximately give or take the downside i would say uh, it, it's just I, I i i they do sell separately from doing a little research the uh other ptfe mice feet and they call it speedy mice feet i think those should have came base here so if anybody from uh, BenQ Zowie is ever watching us, I really love the fact that this doesn't have any software that you have to always just kind of plug and play. You get everything right off the rip. You can set it super easy, adjustable, and you know you got a nice uh, lift off distance. You don't have to worry about that. The glide is not bad at all. But those, I, it's nitpicky. But I really think that that should just come standard with it. It kind of seems like it's the uh, industry standard, in my opinion. But hey i guess what do i know at the same time you know i'm just a dude who just kind of games i wouldn't recommend plugging this in now an interesting little thing you could do is you can charge the mouse by putting it on this little this little thing and that charges the mouse and then boom it's kind of nice you know you do have the usb dongle as well you can plug it in i don't recommend it the mouse kind of felt a little weird plugging it in so if you're looking for a wired mouse it wasn't the most Mm, flexible i mean it's a it's a tilted cable restraint from what they said and it's raised but i i don't know maybe because i've been using wireless mice for so long the technology feels really comparable to logitech i can't see any difference even with this enhanced thing that they that they're pushing and everything i didn't really notice too too bad of a difference there after many hours of play it felt, felt pretty straightforward i'm not a gamer who's going to run around and put this like 100 feet away so from my testing, I don't recommend that. I would never recommend it. The sensor is located right here. So I would recommend, you know, putting it to the left side of the mouse, just as a little FYI. So we'll, let's cut now to a sound test and you can hear, that, hear how the click sound. all right and it's really hard to hear the scroll wheel i try to get that picked up in the mouth the mic it's got a 24 step scroll wheel so who would i recommend this mouse to well you know honestly it's not bad from my gaming experience the weight if you're looking for something a little bit more balanced in terms of weight and you don't like all the marketing i guess you could say gimmicks of a light mouse now the biggest takeaway i will always tell any of you guys who are watching out of every mouse, whether there's the ones that I like or the ones that I'm reviewing or talking about, like from any person, distributor or whatever, is that it's all about the shape. 
The shape is very different from what I've really used, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Shape is the most important thing in the current marketplace today, especially seeing the fact that everyone has pretty much perfected their wireless, and I don't see much of a difference unless you're in a massive stadium and you got a lot of interference and you're trying to play at the highest level. Zowie is known for being for marketing towards professional players. I think that's kind of where their, their biggest stand is. So this is a, a really strong mouse. It's a really strong contender. It's FPS made. There's not a whole lot of buttons on the side. I know the buttons are they're I mean, they're solid that, you know, I, I, somebody plays a lot of FPS games that they have a little bit more weight to them. I know we covered it in the sound test, but there's a little bit more weight across the board to all the buttons and it's just a sturdy mouse. Uh, I will try not to keep going on a little bit more about this. It's just, it's a very straightforward mouse. I think that it's solid. I think that anybody who's looking for something that is, again, heavier, not don't worry about software. You want something clean outside the box. This is a go-to. I think a lot of mice, especially on the wireless end, are pretty pricey these days. This one is no exception to that. So now that you kind of have more options available for you, you don't necessarily have to go Logitech, you don't have to go Asus, you don't have to go Zowie. There's a lot of very good options out there. Just find the shape that feels most comfortable for you that you want to use based on that feel. So if you're looking for something with a higher arch, it feels sturdy, a little heavier, go for it. Now, the most common thing that people ask me as well as we wrap up this video is, are heavier mice or lighter mice better? It depends on your sensitivity setting. It depends on your comfort. It depends on your mouse pad. On a sky pad, this is definitely going to be a little different because, you know, it, it, a heavier mouse will help you have a sometimes a smoother track, depending on your sense, if it's a lower sense. But it can be harder to move a heavier mouse when it comes to when you want to be fast and hitting a lot of targets repeatedly. So there is that. Now, everyone's a little different. Everyone's hand strength's a little different. So keep that in mind. That is just a, a tip. Now, it doesn't mean it's... Don't take it off for face value. This is somebody who's put about, like I said, about 15 hours into this mouse and it was really solid. If somebody said they're looking for something and they're looking for the shape, you can definitely recommend this. It's not bad. Uh, every, every pretty much mouse these days that's wireless is, is pretty expensive, but they last a really good while. Um, I guess the worst part I could say is just the mice feet, especially whenever they're selling them separately. Should uh, should tell Zowie to throw those in there, especially when they give you when they give you these. That doesn't make any sense. They're already giving you these. Why not just have them be the other mice feet, right? Right? I don't, I don't know. Maybe they assume that people are going to like this, you know? And it is, again, it's not bad. Sorry, I'm ranting. Hopefully this video is helpful for you guys in terms of making a ideal purchase. And appreciate you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye, everybody.